Sometimes people send their design work for me to look at and they don't know what's wrong with it, just something about it isn't feeling right. And worst of all, they don't know how to fix it. One of the most common UI components that I get all the time people complaining about is the good old fashioned card component. So in this episode of Rework, we're gonna take a look at this common UI component and we're gonna talk about the five things that are wrong with this. So we take it from this to this. I'm gonna teach you how to fix up all of your cards like this coming up next. All right, I have an Adobe XD file open and it has some really disastrous looking UI cards on it. This is not uncommon. I see this all the time. People submit things like this to me and say, what's wrong with it? I just can't figure out what's wrong with it. And so we wanna take one of these cards and do a drastic improvement to them. And there's really five big things that are going on in these cards. And so let's pick one of them. Let's take this left one and let's try to improve it. And let's start with the very first thing. First things first, the drop shadow is the thing that stands out to me most. And so I can look at this rectangle and I can see it has this big drop shadow on it. It's It looks better with no drop shadow, but we have to keep in mind that if for some reason the background changes to like something like more of a neutral color, we have to, our, our cards have to pop out and they, they have to stand on their own. And so we can select that drop shadow. Let's just drop it way down. So first thing, we'll take the X and the Y axis way down to like four and four. And then we can keep the blur up a little bit, but we're gonna take the opacity of this down. It's at 100%. I like to keep my drop shadows below 10%. Um, so we're gonna take it down to something like 10% and maybe even a little further down to eight. Now, once you've done that, you can play with it a little bit more and we can see this faint shadow that's kind of kicking out. I like that quite a bit. Let's take it back up to 10. I think that does what it needs to do. So it stands off the page just a little bit. And if we needed to go back and bring in some sort of really, really, you know, uh, punchy kind of background color like it was, we can do that without overwhelming with that background shadow. So that's the first thing is the background shadow. All right, now that we fixed the drop shadow, the next thing that would really help this card to look a little bit more like a card is just maybe softening the shape of it. You don't have to do this, but I think it could be helpful. So we're gonna take this background image, this big white shape, and we're gonna rename this layer to card. And we're gonna take that shape and we're just gonna give it a little bit of border radius, something like six pixels of border radius there. You can see um, that my, my image is, everything just wants to peek out of the back of it and that's fine. Um, but we are going to select everything that's in there so with everything selected, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna hit mask with shape or shift control M. And when I do that, you can see we just have some nice slight border radius to it. All right, the next thing we wanna do to really help this card interface along is to actually establish a little bit more hierarchy. And there's a couple different ways we're gonna do that. The first way is the actual layout itself. And that's the space and the difference between the image and all of the rest of the information down below it. Um, we're kind of splitting the card in half. And that's just visually, it's not as appealing. It's not as interesting as if we used more of a rule of two thirds. And so let's just check the card. The card is about 846 high. And so why don't we now choose the image and, and let's establish that to be the same height, 846. That already looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit more appealing, but we don't wanna take up the whole image of the car and then have to battle with contrast for, the for all the text. So instead what we're gonna do is 846 divided by three and we get 282. And now we have a two thirds, kind of the rule of two thirds layout that we're using and we can move the information up and our card actually looks a lot nicer. Now you can cheat this. It doesn't have to be perfectly two thirds. We could move this down and move our image down a little bit if you want to, but just generally speaking, two thirds is gonna look a lot better than this 50-50 established layout that we had before. All right, the next type of hierarchy we need to establish is in the typography itself. Our typography is a hot mess and we need to fix it if this card's information is gonna make any kind of sense to us. The best way to do that is to start with the body copy. I would consider this information here um, to be kind of like the body copy for the project. And so we wanna bring that probably a little bit more towards like a regular 
weight and a regular size, maybe something like 18. You could do a little bit bigger if you wanted to, maybe 20, um, but we also want to give it a little bit of space away from the headline above it. Now the headline above it is 40 and that works out great. We're doing a times two typographic scale um, for our typography. And we're going to move this down and just put this 20 pixels away and we could actually cheat it by going 10 pixels away. Let's keep this. This one is about 20 as well. So we have our body copy at 20 and we have our sub headline or our metadata at 20, but we've just bumped up the, the weight of it. Now here's what we want to do also. We have kind of like this dark black color that we're using. Um, I think we're going to want to, with our headline, use the same color and then we can come up with our, our sub copy or our metadata and we can just do a subdued version. So even though it's bold, it's still legible. We want to make sure it has good contrast, but the whole thing is now a little bit more legible than it was before. If we really want to get like really nitty gritty, we can get into here and figure out what the line height is. It's times two of the size of text, but maybe you want to spread that out a little bit more, you can do that. That's up to you. The next way we can improve this card is with a little bit of balance and white space. We want to make sure that things are on their own sort of grid. And so we take our information inside and select it. It's about 45 from the top and it's about 53 from each side. So let's go ahead and bump these over and just give them a little bit more space so they're actually whoop, 50 away from each side. And then we can make sure that our entire lockup is 50 away from the top as well. Now we have some sort of consistent spacing, but our call to action is not lining up where it should be. So let's drop it over onto that same axis that it was. It's 50 away from the left hand side. And then we can make sure that it's about 50 away from the bottom as well. If we wanted to be really smart and forward thinking, we can make sure that we select our call to action, head over into Adobe XD, and make sure that we turn on responsive resizing and pinning. That way, if our card ever increases in its height, our button can actually stay kind of linked to that bottom left-hand edge and everything's really, really lined up. Now, the last thing I think could really make a difference and improve this design is to improve the call to action. This call to action has a lot of things wrong with it. The contrast is really bad. It doesn't necessarily have to be a button, nor does it look like a button. So I'm actually gonna come in and I'm gonna delete the button shape from the outside. I'm gonna reline up our information. So I'm just going to remove this all together and paste this back in. Now it lines up really, really nicely with our left and bottom hand edge. We make sure that it's pinning to that corner. And that looks a little bit cleaner. And you know what we can do? We can come in, let's just zoom in and let's give it like an arrow or a chevron. So we're confirming to people that it's actually gonna go somewhere. So I'm gonna pull out my pen tool. I'm just gonna draw a little chevron like that. Make sure it has round and butt caps. And let's bump up the size and give it that same accent color. All right, I'm gonna click out of that path that we've made and just shrink it down and play with the size a little bit. It doesn't have to be so big. It's a little bit subtle. It's a little bit nicer and it lets the user know that it has, it's actually gonna go somewhere. And so we kind of group that together and call that our call to action. And I think that helps out a lot. Overall, there's a general feeling of subdued, kind of modern minimalist control that's played on this card versus the one to the right. Everything on the card on the right is screaming for attention. The image, the headline, the text, the call to action. And there's no hierarchy or control. The card on the left looks a little bit more like a card. It looks a little bit more controlled. It has hierarchy. You want to read it. You're excited about the information and you know exactly where you're supposed to look and where you're supposed to tap. Well, that's it. That's another episode of Rework in the Bag. We've taken our UI card. We've improved it drastically. What do you guys think? What else could have been done to this UI card to make it better? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and rework things just like this one. So maybe stick around by hitting that subscribe button and that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out. Hope you guys are having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. Hope you're making amazing things. And I hope you're reworking things until you absolutely love it. I'll see you in the next one.